Hello everybody, this is meant to be a tutorial on cycle optimization in Opus Magnum. I, uh, I made this level, I think it should be pretty good for a demo. It's just this three atom piece that you're turning into a similar three atom piece. And uh, I made a very straightforward solution to it using a single arm on a track. I just laid out the glyphs from left to right. The arm drags it over one by one, so it'll turn the salt into water, salt the middle water, turn the salt into earth, salt the top earth, and it drops it on the product. And then it has to reset. So if you count the number of instructions at the bottom, this is running on a 12 cycle loop. And so it takes 67 cycles in the end. How do you get to 67? Well, it drops the first on cycle 7, and then each one afterwards follows 12 seconds, 12 cycles later. Five additional products must be dropped, so that's another 60 cycles for 67. So first bit of obvious wisdom for cycle optimization, anything you do, you have to undo with the arm to get back to where it started. So here I have this reset command. It turns into six commands as a drop, and then five backups to go for the five pluses that I put on. So if you have five actions you want to perform, it'll oftentimes take 12 cycles to perform those actions and undo everything. Some of the ways around that, not every action has to be undone. For example, a pivot doesn't change the state of the arm. So if I change this last plus into a pivot, and then I put the product where it would be after that pivot, here I have the same drop on cycle seven, but it only takes us five cycles to reset and so we have an 11 cycle loop, and we've already cut five cycles from the solution. We're down to 62. So I saved us five cycles just on how quickly it could reset because I used a pivot. If you go a little bit further with that idea, here is a, this is the same solution, but it's instead of a track, it's winding around in a circle. So it's going to perform five actions and then drop. But because it's an arm that has rotated five times and six times is equivalent to zero, it just takes one more to reset. So this manages to do the same task as the previous one, but on an eight-cycle loop. So now seven plus eight times five is going to give you 47. So although this is better, every solution so far has had no parallelism of any sort. There's one finished product, and then the arm resets and starts the next. To really get anywhere with cycle optimization, you probably have to break the problem into subtasks, and then each arm will handle one subtask. For all the solutions so far to this puzzle, I've had there be five parts to it. There is move it onto the first duplication, then the first calcification, then the second duplication, the second calcification, and output. There are five separate steps, five moves that have to happen before the output is finished. So we can just make that into five subtasks. I uh, made an example of that here. So it moves, then there's a regrab. It moves again, moves again, moves again, moves again. So it takes a little longer to get to the output because of all the regrabs. It doesn't drop the first product until 11. But notice that every arm now gets to be on a four cycle loop. Because if you're going to do something, drop and then undo the thing you did, that only takes four cycles. So remember that our previous best was 47. By changing to a four cycle loop, we've made it a lot faster. Now we're down to 31. So then a natural question is like, OK, where's the limit? How do we know what is as fast as you can do? What makes this solution faster? And what could make this solution even faster? So there are two main aspects to cycle optimization. There's the throughput and the latency. Throughput refers to how many cycles elapse between dropping an output. So we went in this video so far from every 12 to every 11 to every 8 and now to every 4. So we've greatly improved our throughput. Latency refers to how long it takes to make a product. So that's worse in this solution because it takes four extra cycles. But the throughput and latency trade-off has meant that this is still our fastest solution so far. And these definitions for throughput and latency are OK for simple puzzles, but there are lots of cases where you will need a more formal definition. So a formal definition for throughput. In the limit as t goes to infinity, throughput is the average number of products dropped per cycle. 
Latency is, in the context of cycle optimization, the number of cycles between moving the final set of relevant reagents off of the input and moving the final product onto the output. So for our latency calculation that I like to use in this puzzle, the move happens on cycle two that takes this thing off of the input. And the move onto output happens on cycle 10. So between cycle two and cycle 10, eight cycles elapsed, so we have L equals eight for our latency. If we go back to this loop, we still move off on cycle two, and we move on to output on cycle six, so we have L equals four for our latency. And that's just basically saying there are four steps that happened to get from start to finish. So if we go back to our uh, every four throughput solution, and we think about how to get rid of some of its latency, well, we notice that the first two moves could both be done by this first piston. So let's naively just get rid of arm two on the track, scoot everything else forward one, because now the atom's there one cycle earlier, and this should be a cycle faster. But wait, because arm one has to reset, now it's taking us six cycles to get through the whole loop. And because there is an arm that takes six cycles, the whole thing doesn't loop until six cycles have gone by, and we're down to 40 cycles, we're slower. So that's not going to work. We can't just make one arm do two things willy-nilly. But we can do that if we are also having a second arm take over for every other product. So here, I made this into an eight cycle solution, but it's going to handle two inputs in those eight cycles. So arms three, four, and five are just going to look exactly the same as they always did. But now arms one and two are trading duties. They both, will they both will cause the product to move those two, se those two steps. One will do it on the even-numbered products, one will do it on the odd-numbered products, and that saved us one latency. So this went from L equals 8 down to L equals 7, and so now we're down to 30 cycles. There's another pretty commonly used trick for getting um, latency down, and that's to use a multi-arm. So here I got rid of the fifth arm, and now the fourth arm is going to rotate twice and drop. And you see, it just drops the product right onto output, so it has also gotten to do two actions without a regrab. So where we had four regrabs earlier, now there's only two of them. One right here, where three picks up what the one or two had dropped, and one right here, where four picks up what three had dropped. So that saved us two cycles, and we still have the same every four throughput. So it's not as big of a trade-off as you might have thought. So why don't we try to do more of these multi-arms? Well, the problem is, say another arm wanted to pick this up here instead of it being an output. It grabs on this cycle, but it can't move it because the multi-arm grabs it right over again. So usually these three arms that you're using to get two rotations only really work over the output. So if we have the solution already with a three arm over output and there's this piston pair working the input, how could we really improve it further? Well. What if I wanted to combine these pistons with this arm? That would require a track loop. That's a really big important thing for cycle optimization, is being able to get a track loop. A track loop will let you have one unit, which is a track with multiple arms on it, and it achieves more actions on a tighter schedule than any arm could do on its own. So what if instead of having pistons pull it, I had arm one, advance twice on the track, and then rotate, and then drop. You can see now arm two is able to pick it up one cycle earlier, so this should, in theory, cut down our latency. And you can check, we are now dropping on cycle eight. So that's a cycle better than we were previously, but arm one can't reset on its own and still keep this on every four. However, if we turn this track into a track loop, here's what we can do. So arm one moves forward twice, drops. The reset can't just be going with minuses. The reset has to be with pluses. So now arm one in nine cycles gets back to the start. Well, that's unfortunate because nine cycles is not a clean multiple of four, and the closest multiple of four above it is 12. So let's cause this arm one to take 12 cycles. You'll see why in just a second.
Um, okay, that is 12, so I'm going to fix it that way. I put the knobs in here as actual drop instructions, just so that I can see every instruction as it happens. So right now, ARM1 takes 12 cycles to get back to where it started, but it's going around the loop once instead of having to backtrack. So now what I'm going to do, and this is kind of the fundamental of a track loop, I'm going to copy ARM1, so I control, click on ARM1 and drag away, and I have a copy. It's first four motions are plus, plus, and a rotate. Its next four motions are nothing, plus, nothing, nothing. These three arms now can achieve the track loop. We just have to fix the programming. The way that I did it, I followed the arms in the forward direction. I need to offset them by four cycles like this. To be a little bit more clear about what I'm doing, arm two has already gone grab plus plus rotate. So to be doing the same thing as arm one, it next would be performing the steps to get it from two to three. And three would next be performing the steps that get it to one, which is rotate back plus nothing plus. I've turned this into a 12 cycle solution. So the whole thing takes 12 cycles and I have to turn, or not the, the solution doesn't complete in 12 cycles, but it loops in 12 cycles. So I have to make sure that all of the other arms that are doing something maybe on a smaller period get padded with repeats to match the 12. But watch. This track loop as a unit allows me to get rid of a regrab because it's performing three whole actions. It's plus, plus, rotate. It's performing three whole actions without ever dropping the product. And the reason that it can keep doing that without needing the extra time spent resetting is because the next task is handled not by that same arm, but by a new arm. So we have this track loop. It could probably do more actions and get rid of arm four entirely. Let's try to work on that. So right now, the time that is spent resetting has a lot of these knobs in it. I don't want to program three arms at once, so I'm going to get rid of two and three again. And I'm just going to focus on one arm at a time. So if instead of here letting go, I did another rotation, and I changed where this calcification, calcification glyph was, and I drop here, that's a complete output. So that's pretty simple as far as one task goes. And this is already in a situation where it can be turned into a track loop just like the previous time. So once again, I'm going to copy the first four actions on one. Grab plus plus rotate. The next four actions, rotate plus drop, rotate back. And then since it's only 12 actions in total, it takes three arms because each one is going to re repeat four cycles after the previous one. So using, again, this kind of staircase trick, as Grimmy calls it, to get all the instructions lined up. This is how this track loop was programmed, and this is why it's so much better. We have achieved that seven cycle first output on every four throughput. So now we're down to 27 cycle solution. However, because we're not worrying about any of these things being, there's nothing in the solution which forces us to be period four. We can actually be a little faster. We can maybe turn this into an every three cycle or every two cycle track loop. In fact, this solution that we started with, perhaps without that pivot, but I'm going to move it down for a reason that'll make sense later. The solution that we started with is kind of perfect for an every two cycle track loop. I'm going to allow it to return. And instead of using um, minuses to get back, I'm going to use pluses. So there it is able to deliver one product. Now I turn this arm. Its first actions are grab plus, then it's plus plus. And then it's another plus plus, then it's drop plus, then it's plus plus, and then it's plus plus. But since it's 12 cycles, that gets us back to where we started. And I'm going to use that same staircase trick here, but with six arms all going. And they're emulating in every two cycle action, so I'm only going to stagger them by two cycles at a time. And the result 
is much higher throughput. This is in every two solution. So we're down to 17 cycles. Is this optimal? Well, it's optimal throughput because we're grabbing the input as quickly as inputs can be grabbed. They can be grabbed more than every two cycles. But I've been just kind of letting it fly that, hey, we're using this process to turn the input into the output. And it might not be the best process. So I made another solution that I called lower latency process. Now this is not going to go as fast as the previous one because it's still going to work on an every four throughput schedule, but it'll show a much faster way of turning the input into the output. So instead of using calcification and duplication, you can use the same three atoms and just move them around, unbonding and rebonding. Whenever you unbond something, you have to grab both sides, so it's going to add to the number of arms and sometimes cause you to be a little crowded. But in this case, it's much faster. And using the same three-arm trick to put it on the output, we get down to a first output on cycle six, which is much faster than we had before. And that is even with this regrab at the beginning. There could probably be a way to avoid that regrab and get down to a first output on cycle five. So now, knowing that we can make track loops to get something happening at maximum throughput, and knowing that the optimum latency is not, in fact, an L equals 4 path like we were using before and might be as low as L equals 2, let's try to find it. And uh, spoiler alert, there's this solution here called cycle optimal, but I'm instead of going into it, I'm going to uh, recreate it in a sense. So what a cycle optimal solution would need to do is behave on an every two cycle track loop, which means that the first thing you do after grabbing it is a plus because you cannot have more than one um, you can't have more than one non plus action in a row if you're using an every two cycle track loop because then the next arm in the path would want to be on the same tile as the arm which is performing that action. So when we're, when we're working with this, we're going to have to go grab plus something else plus something else plus something else plus throughout. We can use another plus in the middle, but we can't do more than one cycle without a plus. So if we wanted to have our first action be an unbond, and then our next action be something that gets us to the next stage of this solution, that's a little awkward because we let go of half of our, our product. But one of the nice things about having tracks, if two arms hold this at the same time, and they're both on tracks, they can both keep going. And what's really amazing here is, hey look, we've made our product. So what we have to do next is move it to output. So I'll allow both of these to get their next plus, because I mean they have to, they're on a two cycle schedule. And then they'll drop here. And then they'll plus again because they have to. Notice, however, they're back where they started, but they're not in the right orientation. So we actually have to make the track one longer just to accommodate that need. So here is what the solution without all of the other arms in it looks like. But you'll notice that it drops the first product on cycle five. And it's prepared, you saw these pluses, for a uh, two cycle track loop. So all that remains is to copy the arms like all the other parts have done. And because they're doing the exact same instructions, I'm actually going to get rid of one of them and just do the copying on one arm. So first is grab plus, rotate plus, drop plus, and then the rotate plus gets it back to where it started. I'm going to use the staircase to get them all programmed correctly. Move this to the front again. And then because we had that happening in two different places, I'm going to make a second set that are all length three. This one has the grabber arm on the blue. This one has the grabber arm on the white. And ready? We have a 15 cycle solution. This is cycle optimal for this puzzle. It can be proven that L equals two is optimal and we are at maximum throughput. And that was kind of how we got there. It uses track loops, a lot of other tactics that are relevant to cycle optimization. And I hope this helps people in the tournament this coming weeks.